Secretary Shalala, we are delighted that you're here. In fact, we're honored that you've chosen this moment to be your first appearance before the Congress on an important policy issue. Mr. Chairman, uh, let me first uh, compliment your leadership and the leadership of this committee. I basically am an academic, a political scientist who's gone in and out of government. That's been my career. I was the Secretary for Health and Human Services, so I had a quarter of the entire federal budget because I had Social Security and Medicare and Children's Health Insurance and the National Institutes of Health and the CDC and the FDA. All these agencies reported to me. I'm proudest of things like getting every kid in the country immunized at the right time because it really improved children's health dramatically. I'm proud of doubling the NIH budget. It was a bipartisan deal because that's a legacy that will last for centuries. I've always loved academia and I love the students, so an opportunity to come back and work with young people is very important to me. It's an important work to create universities and to make them better. We've raised a profile in the university. Well, the first Momentum campaign, which was a $1.4 billion campaign, really put us on the map. No one thought a medium-sized college in South Florida could raise that kind of money, and we demonstrated we could and that the community was committed. We have better students than we've ever had. We're in the top ranks of American universities now. Just an extraordinary experience in Miami. I hope your experience here has awakened and nurtured your passions your hopes, your values, and your sense of responsibility for the world you live in. More importantly, I hope you'll always remember it's great to be a Miami Hurricane. I ended up running great universities because I developed a set of management skills. Understanding business also made a difference, and in many ways universities are a bunch of small businesses. Much of my youth was spent around JA, and I actually did JA for four years. We went to a JA center and we built our own companies. We made a stool that everybody in my family still has. It had a flip over for the first step, and it was a little wooden stool, and we painted them all sorts of glorious colors, and we sold them door to door in our neighborhoods. And I have relatives that still have those stools. It was pretty exciting. And I became an officer in the JA organization. I went to NAJAC, the National Convention in Bloomington, Indiana. I think um, we were becoming entrepreneurs. We were learning every aspect of business, from building financial plans, to marketing, to designing the product, to identifying who we were going to sell it to. Um, I had a bunch of very successful companies as a young person, and only one failure, but I learned more from that failure than anything else. But more than anything else, I think it was getting that experience with adults in the business community that young made a big difference in my life. It gave me some self-confidence. It was an extraordinary experience for us. We thought we were pretty cool, but we also thought we were the future of America. We had a sense that we were going to build the companies in the future, and JA gave us that opportunity. It actually spread over to other things I ended up doing here at the university. We have a place where any student can walk in and get help on preparing a business plan. It's called the Launchpad, and those kinds of ideas came out of my JA experience. Hi. Hi how, how are you? you? Good. We're strictly here to just educate you on what steps to go on to, okay. what to think about, things like that. I think getting this kind of experience and respect for people who build things, that create jobs, not just take jobs, but create jobs, is very important. Uh, for our country in particular, but for every country in the world. I think the JA experience continues to shape uh, young people for the future, and now all over the world. I'm Donna Shalala. I am JA.